was springtime a year ago, and um, so I just set them up and I made a painting. And of course, I waited a couple of days so they look like some of them are, are wilting and dying. So there's an aspect to to the you know the organic aspect, which is the, you know, plants bloom and plants die, you know, life and death. Um, but the, the drawing really is just the moment of looking at something. It's just a drawing of me standing there, looking at the flowers, making a drawing. Um, there's no grand idea. It's just an expression of that, that moment and what I saw. Um, behind me is Wheat Hand. I was before talking about how my friend's hand emerged in the painting, and I let it come and I let it be, and um, it's exactly her hand, actually. I came to look at it. I was looking at it this morning. Oh my God, that's Julia's hand. <laughs> but anyway, um, it has, this has to do with that moment, you know, and remembering that moment. So that's important to me. I will never be purely non representational as an artist, I have to represent something. It's important to me. The last one I painted, just before I had to ship the paintings to New York, and it's there I was experimenting more with the idea of uh, the original brush strokes and trying to leave them um, as first stated you know, freshly and spontaneously um, on the canvas. So there's more, I think, more white bare canvas in this painting, perhaps. Um, and yet, you know, it still has the dark tonalities of the water and the reflection of the mountain. It's called Mountain Above. It's the lake in Switzerland that I live by, the Zugase. These two paintings do have, um, they're painted on two separate canvases, so they do have this scene here. And this refers to the surface again. So this has to do with my idea of, of separating and extending and creating a tension. So these brush strokes on the surface here have to be able to qualify a surface to deal with the edge in here, which is that scene. And here, there's a white line, another geometric device, because that's where I originally cut the photograph I used, and it was too narrow this way. So I stuck it back, and then there was a white line, which I kind of like. And that makes it another kind of geometry here. And very often, I use the bottom of the canvas, or the edge of the canvas, as another, uh, another indication of edge. This cloud here started out as something else, gray and blue. I tried all kinds of things. And then I painted it pink, and then I painted blue on top of it. So it ends up optically purple. <laughs> now, whether the cloud actually that day was purple or not, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's an analogy. It's not really literally true. It's what I remembered about the movement of the water. As you look down on the edge of the lake, it's shimmering. The shapes are always changing. So it could become something else. So I wanted the, the, the painting to be that kind of fresh, kind of spontaneous painting. Also, in this painting, um, there's the indication of a piece of tape that I had on the photograph, which is that piece there. I kind of like the geometry of that. Um, because it made a right angle with the line of the clouds, I included that. <clears throat> and the dark side of this kind of V, this geometric triangulation here, that they make a V shape in the water, um, that uh, is part of a kind of geometric uh, underpinning for the painting. So it's not just a sort of romantic. Uh, painting of the sun going down, you know, reflecting in the water. 
There's also a, a great deal of structure and thinking about structure in this painting. A very large brush stroke here, and then some other, other brush strokes over there. This big brush stroke up there, which I help, you know, although they're flat, <laughs> although they're flat, um, you know, are, are also um, correct in the sense that it looked like they're luminous and have a reflection and, you know, the moment of the sunset uh, conveyed by them. But they're actually big brush on the surface. There's one there, there's another one there, there's another one there. These are all flat, flat elements. Here is um, what's left of the branches of a tree on the shore. Got got painted out. I'm sure. well, I like the blue in this one. I used extensively a cyan blue. The largest painting here in the exhibition is called Wake Water. It's, it's the memory of what it was like to be on the lake on a boat moving through the water. And the turbulence that you see in the foreground here, in contrast to the passivity you know, of, the, of the hills and the flatness of the water and the color changes and so on, I quite like it because it's freshly painted in a sense that it's not over painted. You know. Um, and also, as I was painting it, the paint was thin and ran down and I left, left those uh, dribbles. There's some dribbles here, for example, and some runs up there. Just to remind you that it's a flat canvas and not uh, at all, all illusion. Um. These forms here, the forms of um, the turbulence in the water, they then in turn have almost uh, zoomorphic or anthropomorphic associations. They can be things, they can be animals or people or something. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, it's been very successful and a wonderful experience. And actually, uh, my stay in, in New York has been quite transformative. And uh, putting all these things together has given me the motivation, the inspiration to go back and do a whole new body of work. And so uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank <laughs> you. And a really lovely picture here at the center. Mm -hmm. I hope that we will sell all of them. Mm -hmm. You already sold one. Our program here is just to be really happy that the paintings will be an integral part of your language school and your idea about um, um, the identity with the with art, with the arts, various kinds of arts, music as well. So I think it's a, a really marvelous idea and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.